everyone, I'm Jo from Country Cow Designs and this is my tutorial for the Momexa crossbody bag. So the Momexa, you might notice if you see my other videos, is similar to my Lomexa, which is the much bigger version. So this is the miniaturized version. It's also had the zip pockets removed. It's just a bit simpler. It's got less pockets on the inside. It's quicker to come together. Um, and it's got a base overlay on it, which means you can use directional print because we're using two separate panels for the exterior. So it's just a little bit different to the Lamexa. It's like a really good size for an everyday crossbody. So there's a little look at the size of it. Uh, just for instance, if you've got like a standard size wallet, you can kind of see the room that it takes up inside there. It's just great for carrying you know, your essentials, your mask, your keys, your wallet, that sort of thing. It's a really nice little size. It comes together really quickly. Yeah, I'm hoping that you're gonna love it. So there's a couple of options. You can add an exterior zip pocket if you want one. This is a brilliant size for your mobile phone. So it's a really good size for that, but that's completely optional. Um, you can add a tassel if you want to, that's also optional. And you can choose between a one inch strap or a three quarter inch strap. So this is a one inch, just because I normally only keep one inch hardware like in stock. So three quarter inch looks really nice on it because it's a little bag and it looks nice with a little strap, but that does depend on whether you've got the hardware available. If you haven't got rectangle rings available, you can of course use swivel clasps and D-rings instead. They work absolutely fine too. This has got um, a zip closure on the top so it closes up nice and neat which is great and because we're using foam for stability you can use cotton woven which is this one is you could use um, canvas which this one is you can use cork or of course you could use vinyl so it all depends on what your machine can handle if you want to use Decaville light instead of foam you can that's fine some of the testers did that and and it works absolutely fine there's plenty of stability in it so I think that's everything. Um, in this video, I've introduced chapters, which means if you link along the bottom, normally when you scroll to a separate part of the video, you can't see exactly where you're going. But now you can skip to a specific part of the video if you want to. So there's timestamps in the description, but there's also um, links at the bottom if you want to skip to a particular step that you're struggling with with the pattern. Now, if you want to sew along with me, you'll need to buy the pattern. That's available from my website, countrycowdesigns.com. Otherwise, you can just watch along. Um, but yeah, if you're actually sewing it, you're going to need to have the pattern with you as well. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask. I always try and link the materials and the tools that I'm using in the video description. But if I've missed anything and you want to know where I sourced my stuff, feel free to ask. I'm always happy to answer your comments. And yeah, enjoy the tutorial. So these are the pieces that I've got cut out for my bag. For the exterior, I'm using this canvas, which I've interfaced with woven interfacing. I'm also going to use some vinyl just for some accented pieces. So I've got my strap connectors, my crossbody strap, my base overlay, and my tassel. They're all gonna be made from this vinyl. So the tassel is an option, you don't have to do that, um, but if you do want to do it, you'll need um, just like a tassel cap for the hardware. So that's an optional piece. Then you'll also need for your hardware, you'll need two rectangle rings. Those can be substituted for two D rings and swivel clasps if you don't have rectangle rings, that's fine. You're gonna need four O rings. So you want those to be one and a half inch O rings um, or you can go down to 35 millimeter, which is um, the size I think that's quite common in Europe. That's fine. Um, so 35 or 38 millimeter, but I definitely wouldn't go any smaller than that. Uh, another option, if you want to use them, is to use rivets. So I'm going to show you how to use those in this tutorial. If you want to, you can add a zipper tail, like a hardware zip tail. That's optional and you can add a strap end if you want to. So there's a few little options on this. You'll notice that I'm doing all the options and I'm also gonna do the exterior zip pocket. So I've cut out an extra zip for that. And I've got my zip pulls here. So I've got my top exterior zip, my pocket for the exterior and my pocket for the interior, which is a number three. Then I've got my lining fabric all cut out. 
which is cut out of this light blue, minty kind of colour. And I've got my foam cut out and my base stabiliser. So that should be all of your pieces. Let's get started. So on your strap connector, you need to draw a line down the centre of the strap connector on the wrong side of the fabric. And then you can see that I fitted some double sided tape down the edge of each side. So I'm just going to fold this in and bring it in to meet that centre line. And I'm going to do this along the whole length. Now, if you're using canvas or cotton, you can just press this with an iron. Um, but instead, I'm using double sided tape because I'm using vinyl. And I just need it to stay in place until I stitch it. So this is double sided tape that you can sew through. Make sure if you're using tape that it's the kind that you can sew through. Otherwise, you can use something like Fabri-Tac glue uh, or a similar type of glue that is capable of being sewn through. So next, you just need to fold in the other edge to meet it and just do this along the whole length. So if your vinyl is struggling to stay put like mine, you can just add a few clips as well. Now we're going to top stitch this with a quarter of an inch seam allowance in from each edge. Make sure you use a quarter of an inch because later on when we sew it on with an eighth of an inch, you want to make sure that you're not stitching over existing stitching. It looks nice and neat if we do it now with a quarter of an inch. So next one to your crossbody tabs. So just draw a line down the center of these and then we're going to do the same as we did before and bring the edges in to meet that line. But this time, because I'm using canvas, I'm able to just press it with an iron. So you want to do that with both and then we're going to mark it about halfway down. Now grab a rectangle ring. Now if you've got a break in the ring, just make sure that's on the inside so it won't be on show later on. And what we're going to do is bring these two edges down to meet this centre line and stick those in place. So I'm going to use a little bit of double sided tape again for this. So you might want to add a clip just to hold that in place. And later when we attach it, it's going to be like this. So that fold there is going to be hidden. So I'm just going to put a little bit more double sided tape on here so that it's ready to attach later on. But I'm going to leave, leave that cover on. So later on, we'll use that to hold that in place. Now just do the exact same thing so that you've got two. There you go. And just like that, you've got two. So set this aside and grab your crossbody strap. Now on the back of your crossbody strap, you're going to do the same again and draw a line down the, the whole of the center and then I'm going to use some double-sided tape on this because it's vinyl to hold the sides in. Now if you're using canvas or cotton first of all you need to fold this end in by half an inch and the other short end as well. So then what's going to happen is when you fold this in you're going to be left without any raw edges. Now if you've got quite a thick vinyl like I'm using it's just going to end up too bulky so for me I'm instead going to leave the edges raw on one end 
and on the other end I'm going to use a strap end so it's a piece of hardware that just covers the end of the strap so it's one of these now with vinyl and cork you can just leave it raw if you want to um, that's fine you could edge coat it or you could put a strap end on or if your machine can handle it then you can fold the edge in first so it's really personal preference for me I'm going to use a strap end on the end that's seen and the other end of the strap is going to be sandwiched between two layers so I'm just going to leave that one raw once your strap is completely folded in you can see that it's meeting in the center there then you want to fold it again on that original center line and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clip this all the way down this edge in preparation for stitching. So the next step is to stitch this. I'm going to stitch it with an eighth of an inch seam allowance across all four edges. Then I'm going to sew it with three eighths of an inch seam allowance down each edge in addition, just to give it some extra stitching. It kind of looks cool and it, it always feels like it makes it a little bit stronger. Um, so this is actually the thickest vinyl I've ever sewn with on my machine so we'll see how it goes but when you're using vinyl or cork make sure you don't leave your clips on for too long you just want to clip it and then sew because otherwise you can leave some teeth marks behind So that's my crossbody strap done for now. You can probably tell that this vinyl is definitely outside my machine's capabilities. It's the first time I've used vinyl like this and I just thought I'd give it a go. Um, some of it's not so bad, but you can probably see that some of the stitching is shorter than others. I tried changing between my Teflon foot and my walking foot and adding scotch tape to the bottom of my foot and oil and different things like that, all the tricks that usually work, it still really struggled. It really, really struggled to put it through at an even pace, which means some of my stitches are slightly shorter than others, which is annoying, but because I've used a matching thread, um, I think I can just about get away with it. So yeah, know your machine's capabilities, I guess. Okay, so for the next step, this is the optional exterior zipper pocket. So if you don't want the exterior zipper pocket, just skip ahead. Um, but for this step, you're going to need one exterior piece. So I've already cut mine into two. So it gives you the uh, measurements for that in the pattern. Then I've got my exterior zip and two zipper pocket pieces. So when you cut this, just keep track of which one's your top, which one's your bottom. If you've got a directional fabric, make sure that you keep them so that they're facing up. So the first thing you're going to do is figure out which way your zip goes when it's closing. So mine goes that way and put it right sides together with this bottom of this top piece. So you want to make sure that zip is going left when closing. So I'm just going to clip that together and then baste it with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once that's basted on, grab one of your pocket pieces and we want to have this right sides together with that exterior piece. So the zip is going to be sandwiched in between and just clip that together. Now I'm going to sew that on with a quarter inch seam allowance. So for me to get a nice straight line, I don't use my zipper foot. I just use my standard presser foot and I move my needle over as far as it can go. Then the presser foot pushes up against the zip here and means that I get a nice straight finish. So you can do it however you prefer, um, but just make sure you use a quarter inch seam allowance. So when you're moving your zip pull, make sure you leave your needle in as you do it. And if you want to, you can actually sew a couple of stitches over each end just to make sure you don't lose your zipper pull. But that doesn't seem to be much of a problem for me, so I don't bother. 
Now grab that exterior piece of fabric and push it up, up away from the zip. And I'm actually gonna press this with the iron since I'm using canvas. So all your seams should be behind. Now we're going to top stitch through this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. When you're top stitching, just use a longer stitch length that looks nicer. And I generally go for about a four because that's the longest that my machine does. But you're going to be top stitching through these seams at the back. Right, grab your other exterior piece. Now, make sure that it's facing the right way. So this, this I can see is the top because the print matches that way. And what you wanna do is attach this other side of the zipper to the top. So we're gonna clip it right sides together. Now we're gonna baste that into place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now grab that second pocket piece and just put it so it's right sides together with the other pocket piece and clip that together. So once that's clipped together with the zip, it should be right sides together with this pocket piece and ultimately it's right sides together with this exterior piece that you just basted and the zip is sandwiched between. So again, we're just gonna sew across here with a quarter inch seam allowance. Now you need to push that pocket piece away from the zip. And on the other side, you need to do the same thing with the exterior, just push that away. So I'm gonna press that again with the iron, but first I'm just gonna clip this top pocket piece out of the way, because when we're top stitching this, you want to be top stitching through the bottom piece, but you do not want to top stitch through the top because you'll just sew the pocket closed. So since I'm using canvas, I'll just press this. And then we're gonna to top stitch through here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So grab this top piece of the pocket and just pull that down. Now it's going to be slightly shorter than the bottom pocket piece. So just mark that bottom pocket piece to match. And then I'm just going to trim that bottom pocket piece, but I'm making sure that I've pulled it away. So I'm not, I'm not going to go through anything else. Okay, once that's roughly even, doesn't need to be particularly exact, just clip them together. And what we're gonna do is pull this away again and sew the bottom of the pocket closed with a quarter inch seam allowance. Once that's sewn closed, we're just gonna base the sides together. So just clip the pocket to the exterior down both sides. And then I'm just gonna use an eighth of an inch seam allowance down both sides, just to tie that pocket in so that it stays in place when we're working on this panel later. So that's your finished zipper pocket panel. So just check that it's the correct size, as in the pattern, it should be the same size as your other exterior panel. If for some reason it isn't, it could be because maybe you've used a different size zip or different seam allowances. Um, then you can always just trim it down to match. So we'll now move on to the exterior preparation. 
So for this step, you're going to need your two exterior panels. You're also going to need your strap connector, which you should now have cut down into four short pieces and two long pieces. All the measurements are in the pattern. And you're also going to need your four O-rings. And at the end of this section, we'll do the tassel. So if you're gonna have the tassel, you're gonna need your tassel and your tassel cap. So we'll start with just one panel because we're doing the same thing to both. So I'll just show you how to do one of these. Now you should already have a line marked across the top here and two little marks just here. So for me, I'm using this friction erasable pen. I still have to be careful um, not to sort of scrape it as I'm marking because sometimes when you remove the line, you can see a faint, a faint white line where you've marked it. So just be careful of that. Um, you could use tailored chalk or something like that instead if you prefer. You're going to need two of your short pieces and one of your long ones to start. So what I've done is I have marked each of these according to the pattern, marked it on one end and put double sided tape on the other. So you're just going to pop an O-ring on, take that tape off, and then you just fold that back to the line that you made. So now I'm going to put some double-sided tape on the back of this as well. So I know I use a lot of double-sided tape in this pattern. It's just the easiest way to hold everything in place while you're sewing. Okay, so you can see my little mark just here. What I'm going to do is make sure that this fold where the ring is, is on that mark. and the top needs to be in line with that line that you've created. So I'm just going to stick that there. And then what I'm going to do, because I'm using rivets, I'm going to mark where I want to stitch up to. So if you're not using rivets, you're going to need to sew as close as you can get to the ring. But if you're using rivets, this is the nicer way to do it. So I'm just going to mark one inch down here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew at an eighth of an inch along this edge, down the line and back down this line. So you can do both of them at once because we're going to have the same thing on the other side, but I'm going to do them one at a time just to make sure that this one's on before I stick the other one on. Occasionally when I'm doing them both at the same time, the other one sort of comes loose if the sticky tape isn't holding. Okay, so I had to take my time with that because my machine really does struggle with this vinyl. Um, but before I fit the one on the other side, I'm just going to fit my rivet. So I'm just going to use my template for this, but if you don't have one, you can just follow the measurements in the pattern. So I'm just marking where I want my rivet to start with. Then I'm going to use my hole punch. So you can find these on Amazon and places like that just by searching for leather hole punch. There you go. And that's just made a nice hole through the whole lot. So grab a rivet with a post and a cap. And you're just going to push the post through there. And put the cap on the other side. Now, the easiest way to fit these is with a press, so I'm going to use my press. I've got dies fitted that are the right size for this. I'm just going to pop that in there. And I just check that it's sitting nice and snug before I push down. And that's your rivet fitted. So you can see that's sort of holding that in place. Now, if I was not using rivets, I would have to sew right up to the O-ring. So next, I'm just going to do the exact same thing on the other side. So I'll grab another O-ring, bring that back to match that line. Now I've put some double-sided tape on. 
and I'm going to make sure that it's matched up with that little mark there and that it's straight along the top. So I'll mark my one inch again to show where I want to sew up to. And then I'll just sew that one into place. A bit of rivet there as well. So the next thing is to do the middle one. So I've added a bit of extra tape just because this vinyl doesn't seem to be sticking particularly well. And I've marked this one in the center. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just put that through there and bring this end, you do it from this direction, bring this end back to meet the center mark. So just make sure it's nicely stuck in place. And then you're gonna put this through the second O-ring. Maybe you can keep your tape in place, bring it back to meet the other end. So it should fit perfectly like that. If yours is looking a bit tight, like the O-rings are pulling in and you get increases, then just loosen it up. Just the most important thing is to make sure that it sits nice and flat, nice and neat. So it should, if everything's lined up properly, that should be exactly where it needs to be. Now I'm just gonna put some double-sided tape on the bottom just to hold that in place. And I'm also going to do the same thing as I did on the other sides. And I'm gonna make a one inch mark in from each D ring, uh, O ring. So what I'm gonna do is just sew a box across here, up this mark, across and down this mark. And I'm gonna leave my threads long and just pull them through the back so they're hidden. That way I don't need to worry about back stitching. And make sure when you stick this down that it's lined up with your line, so everything is nice and straight. Okay, so you can see that my long threads are still there. So what you do on the back is you just give them, give each thread like a little tug and what'll happen is it will pull this loop up. And as you pull that loop up, loop through, it will pull the thread through from the front. And there you go. Once you've um, tied off your threads at the back, you just need to fit your two rivets and that is your panel done. So if you're gonna fit a handmade, uh, a handmade badge or a logo or something like that, now's probably the time to do it. You can fit it up there, but I know most people probably want to fit it down here. So um, I've got measurements again in the pattern for where I fit mine. And I would also just mention that if you're fitting rivets, but you're using cotton or something quite thin, then you might not want to fit the rivets at this stage. You might want to wait until we fitted the foam later because otherwise your rivets won't have much to hold on to. So it depends what length rivets you're using and what fabrics you're using, but you may just want to wait and fit them later on once the foam is in place. So that's optional. So I'm just going to remove my lines with a bit of heat and then I'm going to repeat the exact same process on this second panel. So that should be your two exterior panels done. When you're removing the lines, if you've used a heat erasable pen, I actually just find it easier to just iron it from the back because the heat just transfers through and removes all the pen lines rather than trying to work my way around the hardware. So set those aside, we're gonna do the tassel. So this is another optional bit. You don't have to do it if you don't want to, but 
it's pretty quick and it just it's just a nice little added thing so i've actually got my um tassel cutter here so what you need to do is decide whether you want eighth of an inch or quarter inch cuts so the quarter inch will give you thicker tassels if that makes sense and then you just need to cut up the length of the tassel so the top quarter of an inch you don't want to touch now this tassel cutting guide is great because your rotary cutter can't reach the top quarter inch so you just line it up at the top and slide it up uh, but if you're doing it with a normal ruler just mark out the top quarter inch and only slice up to that quarter inch So once you've done your quarter inch, if you want an eighth of an inch, you can just move this over and then you just do the whole thing again. So there you go, you can see that the eighth inch is making quite thin tassels, whereas quarter inch is twice the thickness. So what you need to do next is put some double-sided tape across the top. And then just roll this as tightly as you can. And you need to pop this inside your tassel cap. So if you've got a nice thick vinyl or cork, it should fit perfectly with this size tassel. Mine's going to be a bit of a squeeze, so I think I'm going to have to roll it up tighter. I have used before some thinner vinyl and it didn't, it was just, this was massive compared to the tassel. So what I did was I just wrapped a scrap around the outside and that made it thick enough for it to stay in. So you can always just sort of pad it out if you need to. Once you're happy that's in, just find this hole here and you need to put something sharp like an awl. So this is just an awl through there and you should see it poke out the other end. So if you get it just right, you'll see the awl come through this little hole on the other side and you know it's gone all the way through. So grab your screw and just pop that in there. and just tighten that into place. And there you go, that's your finished tassel. So you're now going to need your base overlay and your base stabilizer. So I've marked the center down both, and I've also put some double-sided tape down. So I'll just remove this. I know I'm using a lot of double-sided tape in this pattern, but it just makes life so much easier when everything stays in place. And all the tape I'm using is safe for sewing through. So you want to make sure that this is inset by half an inch. So I'll just set that there. So it wants to line up on that center line but it's going to be inset by half an inch and that means it's not going to be in our seam allowances later. So just stick that in place and then we're going to fold these edges in to meet that centre line. Now we're going to top stitch these two long edges with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance.
So set that aside just for a minute and grab your two exterior panels. And we're gonna put the bottoms right sides together and just clip them into place. So once those are right sides together, you just want to sew through the bottom with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Now that's sewn, I'm going to press this bottom seam open. If you're using um, vinyl or cork or something like that, I wouldn't recommend pressing seams with an iron. So I would consider just stitching these seams open because you want them to sit nice and flat later on. Otherwise they will be sort of poking up into your lining. And this just gives like a really nice, neat lining. Okay, now grab your base piece and you need some more double-sided tape on the bottom. This will just, again, hold it in place while we sew and it will just make everything easier. It's a lot easier to get a nice, neat finish. Okay, now I've marked my centres on these short ends and I'm going to match those to this centre seam. Okay, now I'm going to top stitch this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance along both long edges. Now, if you want to, you can do an additional seam or two if you wanted to do a quarter inch as well or something like that. Just whatever you think looks nice. Um, but I'm just going to do the one eighth of an inch and hopefully it'll look nice alongside these sets of stitches. Okay, so that's the main exterior panel ready. So now we're gonna move on and we're going to assemble the exterior. So for this next step, you're gonna need your two exterior side foam pieces, your two exterior sides, your main exterior, and then you're gonna need both of your crossbody tabs and the foam for your main exterior. So if like me, you're using a domestic sewing machine, you may just want to trim the corners off your foam because what will happen is it'll get a little bit thick in the seams when you're top stitching later on. So it doesn't need to be exact, I just trim the corners off and then when I'm basting I just miss that corner. So I'm going to do the same thing with the exterior side foam. I'm just going to trim off the top corners though. Of course, if you're using an industrial machine, you just don't need to worry about this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clip both of my exterior sides to the corresponding foam. Once you've clipped the foam to those two side pieces, just set those aside and we're going to do the same thing with the exterior. So just clip this all the way around. When you're doing this with foam, you want to make sure that it's nice and tight, so just make sure that it's lying completely flat against the foam and that it's not rippled in any way because that's how you get a really nice finish. So now that's sewn around, I'm going to baste the foam to this piece with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to do the same with my two exterior side pieces. So when I'm doing this, I just use a really long stitch length, the longest that my machine does, and I don't uh, back stitch when I start or stop because these are just temporary stitches to hold the foam in place whilst we construct the bag.
So that's my foam basted to all my exterior pieces. If you're using a domestic machine, you may prefer to use a zigzag stitch around the outside when you're basting. That compresses the foam in. Um, the only thing is I prefer personally to trim the foam out the seam allowances later on. And if you've zigzagged stitch, then you can't do that. So it just depends on which way you prefer to do it. So set this exterior panel aside and we're just going to focus on these two side panels. Now I've already marked mine. Um, the measurements are given in the pattern for marking it ready for the connectors. So I've got a little bit of double sided tape on the back of each connector. And what I'm going to do is just stick that on there so that this fold is on the mark I've made. So you just want to make sure it's nice and central and that's stuck on there. And I'll do the same thing with the second connector. Now they're both stuck into place, I'm going to sew these on with a box. So I'm going to start on this corner using an eighth of an inch seam allowance and a long stitch length. I'm going to come across here. As I come up here, you'll notice that I use my hump jumper to make sure that my presser foot can get as close as possible to this D-ring, uh, sorry, rectangle ring. Then I'm going to come across here as close as I can and back down. And I'll leave my stitches long so that I can pull them through the back and tie them off, just because if I back stitch on here, I feel like it's going to be quite visible. I'll also just say that that is a total coincidence. So I did not mean to pattern match that, but I'm pretty happy with that. So I'll just take those over to the machine and top stitch those. And then if you want to, you can fit some rivets as well, just to give them a little bit of extra strength. So now I'm just going to do the same as I did with the strap connectors on my exterior and I just give a little tug on these at the back and then what happens is a little loop appears and as you pull that loop it will pull the thread through on the front. So I just do that with all of them and tie them off on the back. Now you can start to actually assemble your exterior. So choose a side, I'm going to go with the zip pocket side and what we need to do is clip these side panels to the edge. So when you're doing this, just make sure that this top corner matches the top corner on the exterior perfectly, because what will happen is we're going to end up with the base attaching. And if you get this bit right, then the base will attach really easily. So just make sure that you're matching those corners up because you'll see that it, it doesn't look right when it's clipped because it looks like this is coming off at the top, but that is correct. That is how it needs to be. Now that's clipped into place, I'm going to sew down this edge with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And when you get to this end, you're just sewing up to this cutout just here. So that should be a perfect 3 eighths of an inch. Watch out because you've got your D-ring just there. So you might want to use a slimmer presser foot or just move your needle over. That's what I tend to do. But I'm going to sew 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance down here. And then I'm going to sew again just inside the seam allowance. So just the right with a second seam and what that's going to do is just strengthen the seam so that if it's under pressure you won't be able to see the stitches stretching. I'd also recommend using a thread that matches because if for example I used a black thread here then there is a possibility that you'd be able to see the stitches from time to time so I just find that gives a really nice finish. What I'm going to do before I sew it is I'm just going to attach the other side and then I'm going to sew both of them at once. Hopefully you can see there my two lines of stitching. So I did my three eighths and then I did one just on the inside of that. And at the top, I have stopped my second line of stitching a little bit below because 
it makes it a little bit easier then when, when we want to press the seam open later when we're top stitching. So I've just recently started doing that. So I've sewn both of those on like that. Now what you need to do is cut into your main panel. So just here where this cutout is on this exterior side, you're going to cut in. Now you're only going to cut in by three eighths of an inch up to where you stitched. So hopefully you can see that's where my stitching is and I've just cut in to there. And I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. So now what you're going to do is pull it up to meet the other side and just clip those in place down both sides. So this is how it should now look with your sides clipped. Now we need to snip in on this edge because we've already snipped that edge. Now you need to do the exact same thing over here. So where the bottom is, where this cutout is, I'm just going to snip in here. So hopefully you can see that. Again, just three eighths of an inch. Do the same on this side. Now, the reason we've done that is because in a minute, we're going to need to sew the base and that's how we can do it. But for now, you're just gonna sew these two sides that you've clipped. And again, we're gonna be using three eighths of an inch seam allowance. And I'm gonna do a second seam right behind the first one. Now we need to connect the base. So what should happen is if you've connected everything correctly, then your base and this bottom part of the exterior sides should match up perfectly. So we're gonna do this on both sides. We're just gonna clip it into place and then we're gonna sew it. So if for some reason your base doesn't match absolutely perfectly, don't worry about it too much. Just match the centers on these two pieces and, and that will do. Um, but ideally, they should match perfectly. So what we're going to do now is sew through this with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then again, we're going to sew a second seam in the seam allowance. Now you'll see that we're just sewing between these cut out corners. If you need to manoeuvre your bag, just don't be afraid to sort of like crush it and push it under the machine a bit. It should be able to withstand it. So for me, I find it much easier to sew with this side up. So I'm just going to push mine under like that so that I can sew through it and see what I'm doing. So now that your exterior is assembled, you can decide whether you want to trim the foam from the seam allowances. So this is something that I really like to do, but I do understand that it's a bit of a faff and some people don't like to do it. So what I do is I just take my basting stitches out. So this is a little bit harder to do with an overhead camera in the way, but hopefully you can get the idea. Once you've done this a few times, it gets really quick, provided you've not got a, a camera in your way. Okay, so what I would do normally is I just re remove the basting stitches all the way up and then I just trim the foam out like this. Now you've got to be careful not to hit your seams, not to cut any of your stitches. But basically I do that and you can see how it cut, cuts down the bulk in the seam. I do that on both sides, I do it to all of my seams. And then I just find um, that it's a bit, I don't know, it looks a bit nicer and it's a little bit less bulky inside the lining. If you don't want to do that, but you're using a domestic machine, I would recommend just doing it on the top later on because it makes top stitching so much easier. Um, but if you really don't want to do this now, it's totally optional, you don't have to do it. So I'm going to do that first. Then what I'm going to do is spread my seams out at the top. 
I'm just going to sew those open. So you can just baste them open. I'm going to do it with all four seams on the top. And what that will do is just make sure that they stay open later on and again make the top stitching easier. So that should be your exterior finished. So just set that aside and now we'll make a start on the lining. For this step, you're going to need one main lining piece, your number three zipper for the pocket, your zip pocket facing and two pocket pieces. So the first thing you're going to do is to mark on the wrong side of your zip pocket facing. So you can see that I've already measured and marked this. The easiest way to do this is just to draw a line one inch in from each edge, which will create this box that we're gonna sew. Now, you're going to have to put this onto your main lining piece. So the easiest way that I find to do this is to fold this in half and find the center. So I just crease that to make the center. And then I fold the zip pocket facing in half as well. So now it's easy to line up the creases in the center. And you're gonna place this just one inch from the top. So once you're happy that that's level, just pin that into place. Now we're gonna sew around this outside box. So I'm going to start about here, because if I start in the corners, I find it hard to get a nice neat finish. So I'm going to start here and go all the way around and back. Make sure you backstitch well at the beginning and the end. And I'm going to be changing to a universal needle about a size 75. And I'm going to change my stitch length to a nice short stitch length. So that'll be about 2.5, which is perfect for this cotton lining. So remember to remove your pins and then what we need to do is to cut through this panel. So I'm just going to fold mine in half and that will help me start the cut. So what we're doing is we're cutting down this centre line and then when you get to the arrows at the end, the triangle, you want to cut as close as you can to the corners without cutting your stitching. So the closer you can get, the neater the finish. But you do not want to cut through your stitching. Now what we need to do is push this through to the back, but first I'm just going to press it to help give it a nice neat finish. So I like to push each portion up and just press it. I just find this helps it to have a crisp finish when I'm done. So then you're gonna pull it through to the back. And what you're aiming for is a really neat finish on these seams here. So if you've got really big creases here, it's just because you haven't cut close enough to those corners, but you can do quite a lot with an iron to help ease those. 
So once you've done that, just set that aside and grab your two pocket pieces. Now for your first pocket piece, you want to place your zip right side up on top. So the pocket piece is right side up and so is the zip. And the zip is closing to the left. So I'm just gonna clip that together. Now that's clipped together, just sew through it with a quarter inch seam allowance or just a little bit less than a quarter inch. Now you need to take your second pocket piece and place it right side up. And then just clip the other side of this zip to it so that it's right side up. So that's got the pocket pieces right sides together and the zip is right side up. And we're gonna sew through this again with a scant quarter inch seam allowance. Now that both those pocket pieces are sewn on, you want to give this a press because we want this to lay nice and flat so that we can fit it easily. So just give it a quick press and be careful if you've got a metal zip or a metal zip pull that it doesn't get too hot. Now we need to fit this pocket in place. So you can see that I've just put a little bit of glue along the edge of the zip. You can use double sided tape if you prefer or something else, but glue is my preference here. So I use Fabri-Tac glue by Beacon. And then what you need to do is just place this main panel so that the zipper is inside the box. So you need to make sure that the zip is laying nice and flat inside. Make sure your zipper pull is inside this box as well, that it's not underneath. And just let that dry for a moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to stitch this into place. So again, I'm going to start about here. I'm going to use a long uh, stitch length, probably about four millimetres, and I'm going to work my way around the outside. When you're doing this, make sure that the top pocket piece is up like this and the bottom one is down. That will make sure that you don't accidentally stitch your pocket closed. So when you're doing that, make sure that as you're going around the corners um, and adjusting that you always leave your needle in so that you don't lose your place. Now this is another occasion where I prefer not to back stitch, so I've just pulled them through the back and tied off my stitches at the back. I just feel like it gives a neater finish, but that's just personal preference. So flip that over and pull your top pocket piece down and you'll notice that it's slightly shorter. So. What we're going to do is we're going to fold up the bottoms of this pocket because it'll give us a nice neat finish when we turn the bag through here later. So I'm just going to fold this one, the shorter one, up by a quarter of an inch or thereabouts. And then what I'm going to do is fold the longer pocket piece to match it. Okay, so your next step is just to clip both sides together. And what we want to do now is just sew the sides of the pockets. Do not sew the bottom, because that's where we're turning the bag through. So I like to sew from this side, that way I can pull the panel out of the way. And you're just gonna sew the side with quarter inch seam allowance and do the same on this side. Make sure you backstitch really well at the bottom because when we turn the bag through it later, it's gonna be strained a li little bit.
For this step, you're going to need your two main lining panels, your top zip, your two lining tops and a zip tail. So the pattern shows you how to use a fabric one, how to make a fabric one, but I'm going to use a hardware one in this tutorial. So we'll start with the zip. Now I'm going to open up the end that will be closed. So my zip is closing in that direction. And this is the end I want to work on to start with. So you just need to mark it on both sides, three quarters of an inch in from the ends. Now I'm gonna do this next step with um, a thread and needle by hand because I just cannot seem to get this to stay in place neatly when I'm doing it on a machine. But a lot of people prefer to do it on a machine, so just whichever way you prefer, we're just basting it into place. So what I'm gonna do is just sort of pinch it and I want that mark to be on the fold. So I've got a nice 90 degree turn there and I'm just going to run a couple of stitches through just to keep it in place for now. So these stitches do not need to be neat. They don't need to be specific. They're just holding it in place for a minute. And then what I'm gonna do is fold the other side to match. So just make sure you've got a nice neat match before you Thread that into place. There you go, you can see that my threads are a mess, but that's fine. Just make sure that you've got a nice, neat match on the ends. So if you want to, you can just trim this down now so that it all matches the same width. You don't have to, but you might find it a little bit easier in a minute. And before I go any further, I'm going to fit my zip tail. So I'm just gonna trim this end down just a little bit. Now, what I like to do is to double fold. So I fold it once and then fold it again. And I do the same thing from the other side, fold it once and then fold it again. You should then be able to fit your zip on there. So I generally like to put a little bit of glue inside my zipper tail before I put it on. So there's just a little bit of glue in there. And I just think that will stop the end of the zip from fraying and it'll also just hold this in place really well. And then just screw that in. So there you go, that's your zip tail finished. I love these hardware ones because I just find them quicker to fit and I think they give a nice neat finish. So next, thing to do is to grab one of your lining top pieces. Now in the pattern, it's got the measurements, mark it up. You want to mark it from top to bottom on each side um, and then we'll attach the zip. So when you're marking these lining top pieces, make sure that you're measuring from the bottom. So you'll see here that the bottom actually tapers in a little bit. Make sure you're measuring from there. And if you mark it from top to bottom, then you'll find this next step easier. So undo your zip and you want to place it so the zip is right sides together and this edge of the zip is lined up with the bottom edge of this lining top. So again, this is the shorter edge, the bottom edge. Now you want your teeth just here to hit this line. So start by clipping that. And then just clip the rest into place up to the second line. Now, when you get to the second line, 
you need to fold the zip so that it's heading up to the top. And you want this edge of the zip to line up with this line just here. So I'm just going to clip that into place. Hopefully you can see there that this edge of the zip is lined up with the line that I drew. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to baste this into place. So I'm going to use about an eighth of an inch seam allowance, but just make sure that you catch, it, catch this fold with your stitches so that it holds it in place. Once that's basted into place, grab your pocket piece. Now I just leave that clip there for now because for me it's just easier, it holds it in place. And what you're going to do is you're going to, this is again the short edge, you're going to fold that over so they're right sides together and just clip that along the top. Now you need to sew through the top here with a quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm just going to move my needle so that I'm sewing right with the presser foot right up against the zip teeth. That helps me keep a nice straight line as I'm sewing and we're just going to sew it across the whole length back stitching at the beginning and end. When you were sewing that your zip should still have been hanging down into the bag. So now you can unclip that and you want to press this top piece up away from the zip. Now if you want to you can press this with an iron or you can just press it with your fingers. Now we're going to top stitch through this so you're going to be top stitching these seams behind at the same time. Top stitch that with an eighth of an inch seam allowance and when you're doing it make sure that your zip is hanging down into the bag like this. Okay, so turn this upside down, grab your second lining top piece and mark it up as indicated in the pattern. Now watch out for the measurements here because they've switched around and they're backwards to the first one. So make sure you're doing it correctly. And what you're gonna do is this time you're gonna line up the teeth with the right hand mark. So make sure that's ni nicely lined up there and clip that into place. And then just clip the rest into place up to the line. Once you're at the line, you're going to do the same as last time and fold this up at an angle and make sure that that line is matching with the zipper tape. So that's what you should have. Now we're just going to base that into place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So if you're starting to worry that you've done this wrong, just um, do up your zip and just check because it is a bit of an odd one. So just check that your two lining pieces are coming together like that. Now, once you're happy with that, what you're going to do is grab your other lining panel. And you're going to want to put the lining top right sides together with it, again with a zip lined up to the top, and just clip that together. So if you unclipped your zip for a minute there, just clip it back so that it's hanging down into the bag again. And we're going to sew this together with a quarter inch seam allowance. So unclip your zip and push that lining top up again and then you're going to do the same thing again and top stitch this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance making sure that your zip is hanging down into the bag when you do that. So 
So that's both of your lining panels done. Now you should be able to do up this zip and have the lining panels come together nicely. So what we're going to do next is just clip the sides together and clip the bottom together, ready to sew the lining together. And when you're clipping these lining panels together, just pay close attention to these joins and make sure that they match up nice and neatly because that will be quite noticeable if they don't match up inside the bag. So you're now going to sew down the sides and across the bottom with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So make sure that you follow the um, line as you go. Don't increase your seam allowance because this lining is already designed to be smaller than the exterior so that it fits nice and snug. So you're going to ignore these corners. You're just going to sew down the sides and sew across the bottom and make sure that you backstitch well at the beginning and end. You might notice that I don't bother trimming my threads. I just sort of jump from one section to the next. That means that I don't have to keep worrying about um, changing them. So what we want to do is we want to bring these box corners together now. But first of all, I'm going to press my seams open on the sides and on the bottom because I feel like it gives a much nicer, neater finish to the lining. So I've pressed that open best I can. Now I'm just going to join the seams together here on this box corner. So just match up the seams first and clip those together. And then the rest should fit together pretty neatly. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew through this with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. But first of all, I'll just clip the other side together so that I can do both of these at the same time. So that's how your two box corners should be looking. So we're just going to take that over to the machine now and I'm just going to sew that closed with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. your lining all finished so there's just one little step that I'm gonna take and that's to press the bottom I just find this gives like a really nice fit inside the bag so where your box corners are you just want to give that a little press and do the same on the other side So hopefully you can see that it's made the bottom nice and neat and then it will just sit really neatly inside the exterior. So open up your zipper pocket because it's easier to do that now and turn your lining right sides out. I'm just going to make my zip, make sure my zip's open as far as it can go. Grab your exterior. This should still be right sides in. And if you haven't already, then you want to mark the centers at the top of these side pieces. So you can just match up those seams and then mark the center. Now you want to put your lining inside. So if you've got an exterior zipper pocket, then you're probably going to want to have the pockets on opposite sides. But there's nothing that really differentiates the front unless you put on a handmade or a logo tag that you want to be on the front. So what you need to do is match up this side seam from the lining to that centre mark that you just made and put that together. And do the same thing on the other side. So 
So everything's right sides together. The zip is hanging down into the bag and you just need to clip the rest of the tops together. Now that's all clipped into place, I'm going to sew around the top with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. And then what I'm going to do is sew a second line of stitching just inside the seam allowance, just to give it a bit of extra support. Now all of your seams should be open. That will make it much easier when you're top stitching later because it keeps it all flat, so there's less bulk to stitch through. Um, and just, yeah, make sure that they're all held open, especially those lining ones as they've not been sewn down. So this is the most exciting bit. This is where you're going to birth your bag. So pull your pocket out and just reach in and grab the exterior. And you need to pull it out through the pocket. Now, depending what materials you've used, this could be quick or it could be very hard. Now, don't pull on the rings when you're doing this. You want to push rather than pull. Much less likely to Grip your pocket. Now, not that I've ever done that, but it's always a bit of a worry. So you want to spend a few minutes really poking out all your seams on the exterior. Just make sure that everything's lying nice and flat. And then now we'll just put that pocket in because we want to tuck the lining in. So I'm actually just going to do up my pocket. I find that a little bit easier. And just push that lining in. So what we need to do is we need to get like a really neat finish around here. So you can roll these seams between your fingers, or if you want to, you can put your hand inside and kind of push it out so that you get the seam pushed out nice and neat. Um, then you might want to press it with an iron, depending what materials you're using. I'm gonna give this a good press with the iron. And once I've done all of that, and I'm really happy that my seams are nice and neat, I'm just going to clip it in place all the way around, ready for the top stitch. Okay, so it's all ready for top stitching. This is a really good opportunity if you haven't already to remove um, your pen marks from various places. Um, if you've got a heat erasable pen like me, so I've done that as well. And now I'm gonna top stitch it with the longest stitch length that I've got, which is a four millimeter on my machine. Um, and I'm gonna use a size 90 needle, a universal one as that will work quite well with the canvas. When I'm top stitching, I always increase my top tension. I find that otherwise it gets loopy on the inside, so I have to do that. I decided today, rather than back stitching, that I would leave my threads long again. So I'm just going to pull those through to the lining side. You can sort of feed them all through this gap at the top if you want to, um, which gives like an even neater finish, but I'm not quite that invested. I feel that this is a really nice finish already. Okay, so once I pulled my threads through, I tied each set of two and I um, triple knotted them. Then what I've done is I've fed them through this needle and I'm just going to push this through the center of those stitches. So if you open your pocket, 
you can find your needle just be careful because you don't want to stab yourself there we go and you can pull it through from the pocket side just like that and then your stitches are hidden so the very last thing that we need to do sewing wise is just to clip this pocket together and sew it. So once that's clipped together, you're just gonna sew through the bottom with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now shove that pocket back in. Just spend a minute making sure that it's nice and neat because you will be able to see it through the lining otherwise. And now you're going to want to press your bag with an iron. So the easiest way I find to do this is that I put like a towel in it or some cloths or anything like that, just to really pack it out. And then I run an iron around to give it a good press on the outside and get rid of any creases. If you've got a small iron, you can do the inside as well, which is fantastic and just makes it look so much nicer. So I'm gonna do that first and then I'll show you how to attach the strap. Okay, so we're going to start with the strap. Now, ordinarily, I would always match my hardware, um, but unfortunately, this vinyl is so thick that it needs a wide mouth slider, which isn't available in Rainbow. So you can tell if your slider is going to fit because what you need is for it to go through once and then for it to be able to come through here and back down the other side. So you can see that this is not gonna fit. So unfortunately, rainbow wide mouth sliders just aren't available. So I'm gonna break all the rules and I'm gonna go with the gunmetal. So whichever type of slider you're using, you want to put it through one side and bring it back through the other. And you want it to overlap by about one and a half to two inches and just clip that in place. Now, if you're using cotton or canvas or something, you can just sew this into place on your machine. You'll probably need to use a zipper foot, uh, but you can just sew it in with a box. And then usually I add an X to it as well, just for some extra reinforcement. Now, because of the thickness of this, I'm gonna use rivets instead. So I'm gonna grab my rivet template. And first of all, I'm going to mark where I want my rivets to be. So you want one of them to be relatively close to the slider, but you still need to be able to get it into your rivet press if you're using one. So I'm going to put two rivets in. Now, again, my vinyl is extremely thick and it's so thick that I can't get my usual hole punch around it. So instead, I'm going to have to use a manual one. So if you're using a manual one, you need to have something like leather or vinyl underneath and you're going to want one of these this is a hole punch so i'm just going to place that over one of the marks i made and hit it with a hammer until it goes through to the other side so you can see there that it's gone through to that side so i'm just going to do the same same thing with this other one I'm going to move my slider a bit so I can get to it. Just make sure you're not hammering through the center bar. OK, so once you've got a nice clean hole on each side, you want to fit your rivets. Now, I'm going to be using extra long rivets because of the thickness of my vinyl. So you just want to push the post through and then same as before, you put the cap on the other side. Once those are on, if you've got a rivet press, you can just set those with your press. Alternatively, you can use a hand tool with rivets, but I really do prefer to use a press if one's available. I just feel like it sets them they feel a lot more secure. So 
So the reason I've left this edge here raw is because it's going to be hidden quite well, as you'll see in just a moment. So grab your bag and you want to put the free end of the strap through a rectangle ring. And then it needs to go up through the slider and back down the other side. Then it needs to come through the second rectangle ring and we're going to fold it over again by about one and a half to two inches. And you can see here why I didn't fit a strap end to this raw edge because it's just going to be sandwiched between here so it's not going to be visible at all. Now if you want to fit a strap end to this raw edge you can do. It's optional because when the bag's in use you won't be able to see it but I am going to fit a strap end just to this one raw edge. So when you're fitting this make sure that you've got the nice side showing and this hatched edging with the screws is going to be on the other side. So these are usually quite straightforward to fit. I'll just take these clips off for a moment. My, again, my vinyl is extremely thick and is struggling to go in. So I'll take a few minutes to get that in. But the first thing you need to do is just slide it into the strap end. Okay, so no amount of persuasion was going to get that strap end on. So I'm going with a raw end instead. I've just made sure that it's nice and neat. Now, if you've got really, really thick vinyl like me and you're struggling to cut through it, this is something I've decided to do. Um, you can cut, cut the holes just through this side. So I, I marked it where I wanted the holes. I cut them when I, I took it off to cut them. So you can see they're only going through there. Now I'm going to clip it back in place. And I'm just going to mark through to the other side. And this will be hidden when the rivet's in place. So it just means that then I can punch these holes and I only have to punch through one layer at a time. So now when I come to put this back through, I can just simply push that through and it just means I didn't have to punch a hole through both layers at the same time. So that is the finished bag. I think it looks pretty awesome. I'm really glad I went with this big feature zip. Um, I just think it, it adds something quite special to this side um, and on the other side I've got my tassel. So it's a little bit unfortunate that I had to use a different colour for the strap hardware but honestly I don't think anybody's ever going to notice and I actually think that the rainbow and the gunmetal hardware go quite well together so yeah I'm pretty happy with that all in all. Um, I don't think I'll be using this vinyl again I just think it's beyond my domestic machine's capabilities. I've used loads of vinyl in the past, but this particular one is just so thick. It really, really is a struggle. Um, you can tell even from the fact that I couldn't fit my um, hole punch around it and I couldn't fit the strap ends on. It's just so thick, which is nice. It's really nice, but it's just not suitable for my machine. So I've definitely learned a lesson there. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, just let me know. And um, just subscribe to my channel if you want to keep up to date with new patterns that I'm having coming out in the future. I've got a few more planned in the coming months. So thanks for watching.